Welcome back to the Brentford save everyone. We are here with the January transfer window as we kick things off today. Thank you for your feedback in the comments section for ideas of what to do with the youth players. Of course we pulled up a couple of potential absolute stunners. Uh, I was initially training Frederick Olsen as a wide midfielder but you guys have uh, convinced me to train him at Cam. So should we change formation or perhaps need a player to come off the bench that can be pushed slightly further forward, then that is an option for him. Uh, I'm also retraining Alexander Samuelson as a centre-back at your request as well, which is pretty obvious. I'm, how I didn't notice him as a centre-back in the first place is beyond me, but still. And there was some call to change a couple of the others to wide men as well. I'm going to hold off on that for now, but we've got a number of young players there that have the potential of having the potential to be very good players in the future. I've added another couple of names to my shortlist at your request as well. Uh, we have... Uh, where are you? Where are you? Ah, Carlson. We have Jesper Carlson now being scouted as well as a potential wide option, a Swede. And I think actually that was, that was all I added, I think. I, think I looked at a couple of others but decided they weren't necessarily for me. So I'm going to start today by just going out and buying Matthew Cox because that's what Brentford have done in real life. And he's not going to cost me anything whatsoever. I will offer Wimbledon £160,000 and I'd imagine they'll just accept that. One hundred and sixty-five. Oh, I suppose I can stretch that far. Let's bring Matthew Cox in. So I, I had initially thought that I would have wanted to bring in that Swedish right back. But I have a couple of others that we're still waiting for the full scout reports back on. I'm torn between spending a little bit of money on a couple of players or a larger amount of money on like one marquee signing. And I haven't yet decided. I have no idea what his current wage is. But let's be honest, at 17 years of age at Wimbledon, it's probably not going to be much. Would you like £1,500 a week? I'd very much like £1,500 a week. So great, you can have it. There we go. Yeah, Joel Anderson was the, the one that I'd initially set my stall out for. But waiting for a full scout report back on Rasmus Christensen. And obviously Joachim Mela as well. I need to... Oh, he's valued at 13 and a half. Okay, I was waiting for a proper valuation for him. Joachim Mela might be someone that we go for, actually. To fill that right back slot. He could be an absolute banger. And of course, super usable as well with regards to other areas on the, on the field. So... We'll start by playing Watford. They're currently 19th. You guys actually asked that I start to sim, especially in this first season, some of these bigger games. Because it kind of gives us a better chance of losing them. Which sounds backwards, but it like it heightens the likens the heightens the likelihood of me getting a more realistic result. It's not realistic for me to jump into a game with a Bruni promoted side and go and batter Manchester City by four goals to two away from home. So uh, it kind of, at least in this first season, for the second half of this first season, so games, obviously when I've only got three teams, then I'll only, I'll obviously play them. But when there's like the option here, I'll play Leicester, Villa and Norwich and Sim Spurs. Obviously, <laughs> as it happens, the way that the fixtures fall for the remainder of this season, I'm going to end up playing them anyway. But if, it seems to give us more realistic results in the City and the Spurs game. Then maybe that's something we could implement for the entirety of Season 2. Because obviously we're perhaps slightly inflated with our league position currently up in ninth. Doesn't necessarily refre reflect where the squad is compared to everybody else in the league. So maybe for Season 2 we do that as well. And sim the bigger games with a view to keeping the series and the, the scale of progression more realistic. So that we have more of a journey rather than, oh, newly promoted side finishes eighth. Oh, newly promoted side finishes third. Oh, newly promoted side fin wins the league. If you see where I'm coming from. That's the plan anyway. That's the logic behind it. And I understand where you guys are coming from. Right. Let's play some football, shall we? Watford at home. They are 19th. Regardless of where we are as a newly promoted side, we should be looking to win this. They too are a newly promoted side and are not having a good season. So let's go and get three points. As ever, though, please do drop the video a like rating. Make sure you subscribe to the channel with the notification bell ticked. And I'll hopefully be able to reward you with some points. And maybe a couple of signings too. Watford with Ben Foster still in goal for them. Ngakia, Cabasele, Sierra Elta and Messina at the back. 
Zinkin Argel, Chilover, and Dan Gosling with Ismail Asai, Emmanuel Dennis, and Ken Semmer as the front three. Dini on the bench, Danny Rose on the bench, Andre Gray. So we've got plenty of attacking options and a couple of defensive options on there as well. Danny Rose could get forward as well from left back to try and offer them something. Although I'm sure the current formation and players in their positions will feel like they can offer something. Obviously good enough to get promoted last year, Watford. So you'd like to think that you'd like to think or you would expect that they think that they're good enough to keep themselves up this year, having only uh, gone down for one season. Is that a foul ref? No. OK, then. Give me that ball back. Or not. Thank you, Christopher. Appreciate that very much indeed. Onyeka. Oh, never mind. Have it back again, Watford. Blech. Not going so well so far. <laughs> but there's still plenty of game to go. Seven minutes in, it's nil-nil. But Watford look like the, the side that are at least finding their passes more regularly. But we are putting in decent tackles. Tennis with a throw for Watford. Faked one way, went the other. And a, an early cross that Ismail Assad did actually win the header from. That was slightly worrisome. It's not the tallest, is he? Ismail Assad, I don't think. Just to Silva down the line, looking for Sergei Canos. I don't know how fast Ngakia is either, actually. I don't know whether we'll have much luck against him out wide or not. That was meant to go to Mbermo. We could still look for Mbermo. Ivan Tony's on a hell of a run. And De Silva and Canos. Oh, Mbermo. His touch was terrible. We'll lay this back. It's Frank on Yeka. Jensen, you're on side there, Ivan Tony. Bury this. Oh, what a save, Ben Foster. The reactions of the man are outrageous there. That's really close to him. Not far away from him whatsoever. And he somehow managed to get fingertips. That's a disgusting save from Ben Foster, to be honest. Come on, Ivan. Up we go. Great header. I think that was Foster again making the save. Can we get to that first? Oh, he's offside. Well, Ben Foster certainly doing his absolute best to ensure that we don't... He wasn't even on the pit. To ensure that we don't score the opening goal of the game. What a ping. Where has that ball come from? Ken Semmer, out of nowhere, squares it. I've scored an own goal. Oh, no. Christophe Rayer tried to stop the sweat by clearing that over the bar. He slid in to get rid of it and just put it in the back of his own net. Semmer's celebrating as if he was the one that scored. The ball through to Semmer came out of absolutely nowhere. And Aya has to do... He has to try something there because otherwise the man in the middle, Manuel Dennis, just tucks it home. He's tried to perhaps steer it either over the bar or wide of the post and in the end done neither. And we trail a 22nd minute own goal. It's not very often you see own goals in career mode, especially from the user as well. And that might be the first own goal we've scored for a couple of series, let alone uh, a couple of seasons. But, oh, that's devastating. I wish I... I need to go back and look at that. Ball through to Ken Semmer in editing because I've no idea where that came from. Just a random hoof, as far as I could make out in a split second's notice. That was a terrible pass. And then he's in. Just clean through behind all of my defence. Unbelievable. Canos helped that on its way quickly. Just a silver. Fucking Ben Foster. Good header. Might not be over yet. And Burmo back. Tony. And Burmo, and Burmo at his feet. And Burmo! Ha! Take that, Ben Foster! 1-1! One, one. Can't keep that one out, can you, boy? Chaloba. It's a little dink into Dennis, and he's avoided one man to get that to Semma. But now Dan Gosling gets involved in the play. Back to Semma again. Into the middle. Man free at the back post. Shmail Asar with the volley. David Raya with the save. It needed to be made. Saar with the corner now after having the shot. And it's a decent delivery too. Janssen rises up well. It's going to fall to Summer. He could try and find himself a position for a shot. He hasn't. And Onyeka will look to break. I don't have many options. Oh, I just needed better footwork from Frank there. And he didn't have the dribbling ability to beat one man to then play the pass. I needed just that one man to be beaten. Thankfully, Raya gets that. It'll be 1-1 at half time. But uh, in a game that's been really even... I was kind of hoping to be a little bit more dominant in this. Watford obviously not had a very good season whatsoever down in 19th. And I hoped that we were going to prove in this game that we were definitely the best of the three sides that came up. But you couldn't pick between us in the first 45. Hopefully you can after the second. Same up. Okay, that was easy enough. If only we could have done that earlier on. Jensen to Onyeka. 
Ivan Tony is forward and available. Runners around me. Look at Jensen getting forward. We go on Yeka first and then to Jensen, who's still bursting forward. Ah, can't quite squeeze that to Ivan Tony though. Timo Werner equalised for Chelsea against Leicester. Hopefully it'll be the home side scoring here next. Jensen quickly from De Silva to Jensen. I haven't yet got myself tongue twisted between Jansen and Jensen, but it, I'm sure it's only a matter of time. Here's Dan Gosling. Exactly many other names that sound like Gosling to get tongue twisted about. Nicely inside to Zinkenagel. Another <laughs> pretty straightforward name to remember. Get to that first, please, Brian. Well done. And Jensen driving forward into the space. Semmer trying to close me down, but Jensen apparently has a little bit of pace about him. And looking for the ball through the gap. It's perfectly played. And Ivan Tony will get onto it. And Ivan Tony buries it. We lead by two goals to one. Let's go. Ivan Tony. There's a brilliant lung busting run from Jensen. And the ball basically just straight towards goal through the gap. I'm trusting his teammate Ivan Tony to have the pace to get there and the strength to hold off the defenders as well because Cabaselli's no slouch in a straight line nor is he weak but Tony's done enough and then the finish on the end of it too against an overperforming or at least very well performing Ben Foster today. We lead again. Hughes into Cucho. It's come off the bench. Christophe Rayer might have scored an own goal but he's certainly making sure they don't score another. Here's Ross Luke. Forward to Janelt. Who is left footed as we found out. Well, this is a hell of a run. Back to Canos, who's right footed and can shoot from here. Whoa! Not far away at all. That would have been a hell of a goal. We are going to win, though, here at home against Watford by the looks of things. With just seconds to go. Only probably two minutes added on at the end of the half. Indeed, only two. Janelt will win that as well. So, a solid performance against the side that we should be beating. Considering the season they're having. But... Considering probably the closeness in overall rating of each of the players, it's probably no surprise that it is, or has been, as even a game as it has. But we get the win, we sneak it in the second half, and we are able to get ourselves all three points. It was Manchester City up next, I think Watford only with the one shot, although obviously their goal came from a second opportunity, so technically two efforts on goal. Uh, no, it was Luton next in the FA Cup replay. Right, I'm waiting for these scout reports, and they have now come back. A transfer bid for Janvier as well, which is great news. Via Carnival will offer me 1.6 million. <sighs> Just accept that. It's not going to make much difference asking for another £200,000. Philip Billing, physically, whilst he has the strength and stamina, doesn't really have much pace. But six foot six, you really need pace. Good shot power. In fact, great shot power. Okay, a good option, Philip Billing. Philip Billing. Robert Sko, 75 rated. I mean, he can basically play anywhere, can't he? 72 finishing as well. I could actually play him anywhere other than in goal, and he'd probably be able to do a job. And for six and a half million pounds, I think, do I spend a little bit of money on two or three players, or do I spend a lot of money on, on just one? Technically, not amazing, Falk. But physically, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Physically. He's a wide player. Surely he's a winger. Gotta be. That's disgusting. It's outrageous. Uh, Rasmus Christensen, what are you like at right back? 75 rated. Uh, brr, brr, I'm going to say no to you, Joachim Mailer. I know you're very, very good. Technically could do the improving still, but in the position we'd be playing him in, that's exceptional. I think, oh, I don't know what to do. I genuinely don't know what to do. I think I want, I think I want Mela, but that's going to be almost all of my budget. Decisions have to be made, lads. Decisions have to be made. Mela would be played at right back as well, to point out. So I'd still need another winger. And I want Damsgaard. But... I'm going to be able to afford that. Well, I won't be able to afford Damsgaard this window. And Johan Wisser is likely to sign for Brentford in real life. So I'd be looking to bring him in as well. I can't. He's playing Champions League football for Atalanta. That's the thing. He's playing Champions League football for Atalanta. Can I justify that? I can't really, can I? No, not. I can't really. Yes, we're trying to sign Danish players, but. 
He plays in the Champions League. He's not going to want to step down to a newly promoted Premier League side, is he? If I'm being genuinely honest with myself and with you guys, Christensen, uh, just, look, I can train Anderson technically. Christensen, I don't know if he's going to grow physically enough to be able to compete with someone like Anderson. I'm going to sign Anderson. I, I would love Joachim Mela, but I don't think in the scenario that we find ourselves in, if we are genuinely wanting to have a more realistic style save than we were having with the Barrow one, then I, I have to be like, we aren't an attractive enough option for a player playing in the Champions League yet. If we were top half in the Premier League, maybe with the chance of qualifying for Europe next year, then perhaps. But we're not. And I can't justify it, so I won't do it. Right. Looks like we're going to be bringing Joel in from Michelin in Denmark. Four years, no release clause. He's currently on 12 grand a week. He's not going to want too much more than that, I wouldn't have thought. Yes, he's coming to the Premier League, but I'm not going to need to go all out, am I? Like, oh. Okay, I do need to go all out. Right. Okay, well, we'll try that again in a couple of weeks. And then we'll make a decision with what to do with the wide role. I do definitely need a wide midfielder, though. I definitely need a wide midfielder because Joel Valencia is not good enough. Dervis Sholu is growing, but isn't good enough to make an impact. And I don't have any other wide options. So I definitely, definitely need to sign a wide midfielder. At least one, if not two. So, uh, yeah, that's the next option then. I think right back, we'll, we'll get Joel done and over the line. And then... From there, I'll sign a wide midfielder. You can, I'm probably going to leave that whole thing in because I want you guys to kind of see the workings behind the scenes, see the, the cogs turning. A bit from Brighton for Raya. New. I want you guys to see the cogs turning and to kind of understand the thought process that leads to the decisions that I make rather than just cutting and being like, I'm not going to sell him or, or I'm not going to buy this guy and then buying someone else. Like, I want you guys to kind of understand where I'm coming from. Uh, Baptiste has gone out on loan to RZ in the Dutch division, in the Eredivisie, and we will sim this game against Luton and, yeah, everybody should be fine. De Silva's not quite fully fit, but this should be a simple win. Really? My... Second string side draw against Luton. My first team lose in the last minute of extra time. What is life? And Burma with our goal. Corn Harry Cornick with their first. And Adebayo with the second in the 120th minute. We are out of the FA Cup. Luton? Fucking hell. Lads, be embarrassed with yourselves. Sporting have come in for Christopher Ayer. No, thank you. No, thank you. They are one of the better sides in Portugal, but in real life, he's just come in. So there's no way that they're going to sell him in January. Janel, a bit from Genoa. No, I'm not. Janel has good, has good promise. And ha other than that open goal that he missed... Has been playing well. Now I am going to have to rotate a bit for this game against Everton. And then we've Manchester City on the horizon as well. We're actually in eighth. Somehow. I mean. I might actually just play with. I need wing backs. God I need wing backs. I might actually play with Rotato here. So he saw that the first wing side is available to play City. I might have to. Okay that's what we'll do then. Oh dear me this is going to be a challenge. But we might as well throw in a challenge. A handful of these players I haven't played with yet. At least not regularly enough anyway. Let's see what we can do at Goodison Park. This will be interesting. Everton, Everton then here at Goodison Park. Have Begovic in goal this time around. Sergio Roberto at right back. The rest of the defence is as you would expect. Tom Davies and Allen in the midfield. Alex Iwobi, Gilfi and Richarlison with Demarai Gray at striker. So Calvert-Lewin on the bench. Ben Godfrey on the bench. Pickford on the bench. Everton switching things around a little bit. But we've switched things around a lot, so... <laughs> Again, this will be interesting to see how it plays out. Do still have some decent players in the starting lineup, though, with Jan Elt, Anurgo, and uh, Rico Henry. Pinnock, 74 rated. Still got Raya in goal at 75 rated. So it's not the worst side, but it's equally, obviously, not the best we could put out. 
We have a free kick in a very promising area, but I don't know as anyone can take a free kick in this team at the moment. Dervis Sholu's perhaps my best option. 28 yards out is quite a distance, but I want to give it a go. Oh, I've done that wrong. Or have I? Oof. It was probably going wide, but Begovic wasn't taking any risks. If You don't get many free kicks in career mode because the AI just tend to not make many fouls. So I, I do look forward to, to having a, a pop shot from uh, free kicks like that. I love scoring free kicks on, on FIFA as well. It's just so satisfying when you absolutely nail one into the back of the net. Satisfying in real life when you absolutely nail one into the back of the net. To do it regularly is such a skill, such a talent. Can't underestimate how impressive it is for someone to be a dead ball specialist. Oh, excellent footwork from the man in the middle. But shot well saved by Raya. Sigurdsson will take the corner. Gilfie delivers and up we go. Uh, Valencia didn't do the best. Nurgle does. And Weaver will get to that ahead of Tom Davies and will look to accelerate away. Young Elliot Weaver has impressed so far in his short time at the club. Dervis Sholu across here to Jan Elt. And I do have options on the left as well. Joel Valencia is there. Inside to Dervis Sholu. Oh, he's just got tackled by Michael Keaton as I was looking to try and find Weaver or someone else further wide on that far right-hand side. It's been actually relatively level so far. I'm quite impressed with the way that these uh, second-string side players are actually dealing with the situation of playing against a better team and in many areas a much better team Alex Awobi here looking for Demarai Gray he's got options he's gone for goal he's hit Raya are they going to get a pen for handball no it was it was Gray that handballed it that flick on's not going to reach anyone Gilfie's going to flick that on he's on for offside I think Gray uh, Gray there he was indeed but Raya wasn't to know that when he made the save David Raya making some impressive stops here to ensure that Everton don't take the lead whether the Goal would count or not if it were to cross the line. And hopefully Maspustru can help us build something going the other way. Oh, but Elliot Weaver can't quite get to that first. Or oh, I killed him. I've actually murdered him. Death on a football field. Oh, how's that for a driven pass? Here's Alan trying to ensure that I've blocked off the angle to get it to Demarai Gray. And we've done that well. Bistro, oh, if I could just get a turn in. Oh, what a challenge by Luca Dini. Getting the ball away from me as he was free on the far side there, Dervis Sholu. Here's Gilfie. Pin it in the way. Well done. Good strength too. Probably going to get sold sooner rather than later, Pin it. But putting in the business in the meantime. Joel Valencia, oh, not doing the business for me in a wide area. Yeri Mina, though, can't deal with somehow the physicality of this small man. Turn him. Go on, Bass. Bidstrup. Bidstrup. Oh, looking for the top corner. We saw Ola Sunagar. With a fantastic goal in the last game for this uh, rotated side. I don't actually have him on the bench here, unfortunately. I should really get him into the fold, considering how well he played in that last game we utilised him. And he buried it in the top corner. Up we go, please, with a header well up. Dervis Sholu, get to that first. Elliot Weaver, 1-0 Brentford. This kid has a bright future. Deadly finisher already at just 16 or 17 years of age. He's already our number nine. And I don't think that shirt is going to be changing anytime soon. Having to make a change purely because of stamina. Uh, Maskoslu is coming off. And Frank Onyeko is coming on in a right back role. Obviously we're looking to sign another right back. I could probably do with a second left back as well to be fair. Bishu to Dervis Sholu. On the overlap here is Onyeka. Immediately involved. And Yeri Mina uses an arm. The referee showing no hesitation in pointing to the spot. Presumably had a word in his ear from his assistant on the sideline who saw it. You can't jump like this. And if the ball hits an arm, not expect a penalty to be given. It will be off. Hamas Rodriguez on. It will be obviously disappointed, evidently there, as you can see, to be being taken off. Elliot Weaver will take the penalty and will try and Harry Kane it into the bottom left-hand corner. Bit of power too. Oh, it has gone in. Asmir Begovic, furious but desperately unlucky. How that squeezed past the big Bosnian, I am not sure. Elliot Weaver with his second of the game, though. And we do lead by two now. Begovic number two for Everton, surprisingly. Oh, it looks almost like him in the face. 
Mate, he's dived for it there. Oh, he's hit him on the underside of the arm. So, so unfortunate. Begovic and Everton. 2-0, though. Who knew that playing this team in this game was going to give us, provided we don't throw it away, a sizable victory? I am surprised, but pleasantly so. Allen around the corner to Tom Davies, who's finding himself in. Whoa! That's why Calvert-Lewin is dangerous. Tom Davies keeps finding himself in super advanced positions. It's finally paid off for them. DCL off the bench to pull one back. Allen into Tom Davies, and then it's just... Gosh, it's just power. Pure shot power away from Pinnock at the back and swept home. Really strong finish. That's what DCL did for me at Everton at the beginning of the FIFA 21 cycle. Now he's doing it against me at the end of the FIFA 21 cycle. Hopefully, that's as far as they get. Just one goal back. It's 2-1 now. To Onyeka. David Shelley made a good run, but I couldn't get it to him. I was trying to shut up shot. Take it towards the corner flag. Now I'm in trouble. Tom Davies trying to force them to go backwards or sideways. Three minutes added on. Hammers in a wide right position. Don't let him cross on his left. Don't let him cross on his left. Again, forcing them backwards and sideways. Tom Davies. One assist. Yes! Forcing them backwards and sideways and getting the result. Oh, we had to work hard for that late on. DCL came off the bench and threw a spanner in the works, but unfortunately for them, they couldn't undo what we'd already done. Elliot Weaver. So I dropped my controller on the floor. Elliot Weaver, coming of age, the youngster. What a time to announce yourself on the main stage. Progress assessment, what have we not done? Sign two crucial players and make profit of 31 and a half million. Probably not going to happen, lads, if I'm honest. Probably not going to happen. Sorry. Right. We should be able to go in for Joel again after the Manchester City game. So that'll be about a week since we uh, last went in for him. City, obviously, third in the table. We are eighth after that win against Everton. And you can see they're starting. Actually, they've got... Correa up top. Which Correa that is, I'm not sure. Presumably Angel. Well, Angel Correa is more of a wide man. Joaquin Correa is the kind of central player, isn't he? I, ooh, I don't know. We lose by two goals to one. That's what you expect from a game against City. That's why we're doing it the way that we're doing it at the moment for the remainder of this season. And then if you guys are on board with that plan, then we'll do it for next season too. Sim the big games, play everything else. If the, obviously the calendar allows. And then we'll get a more realistic idea of where we actually are as a club. You need more games, do you, Ethan? Well, I'm kind of trying to sell you, mate, if I'm honest. Right. Can I go in for Joel again yet? Yes, I can. Good. Okay. Right. Attempt two. Two and a half million they accepted last time. Two and a half million they should accept this time as well. Please do. I have him, what was it, 20k? Oh, now you want Godosh. Uh, well, actually, yeah, um, yeah, sure. If if you come down a bit price-wise, all right. Even if you don't, fine. It's a player that I'm not looking to keep. Okay, we offered him twenty grand last time, and he was like, "I'm insulted." So, uh, hmm. Okay, we wanted important last time, so offer important again. Important again. <sighs> I don't know what to do wage-wise now then. Mate, if he's insulted by 20k, will he will he accept that? So he, 20 grand is insulting, but 29 and a half is perfectly acceptable and probably negotiable. Okay, well he's in then. We have ourselves a new right back. But for the time being, for the time being at least, he will only be on the bench. Because Roslu has been pretty damn solid for us at right back. But I'll put him in for the... Or into the rotation 11. Oh, of course, I can't put uh, Ola Sunagar into the, the rotation 11. Because he's out on loan now, isn't he? I forgot that I'd sent him out on loan. Well done, cheese. So, that's why... I'll oh, do that the other way around. Ugh. Balls that up, but never mind. So, 
That's that's why he's where he is. Right, let's take Janssen out of there and put Roslu on the bench for that side. Right, I do kind of need another left, another wing back, preferably someone that's left footed. Who was that? Was that S Alex Centelles at Almeria? Oh, he's expensive. Well, I might as well scout him, showing great potential. I literally, as I'm mentioning, needing a or wanting a left back. Right, so you're right footed, and I'm going to say no to you. Centelles will wait and see. Victor Nelson is definitely a player I'm interested in at, uh, at centre back. Now, Robert Sko, uh, we mentioned we could play him pretty much anywhere, and he's probably good enough to warrant being in the first team 11, but I don't want to drop Rico Henry. So I could, I mean, he's cheap, so I could try and pick him up on the, on the, on the cheap and maybe do something later down the line. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. I do want a winger, though, don't I? I want multiple wingers, actually. Yes, but Carlson, we still can't see his exact stats. So we'll wait a little bit on the wide player front for now. We'll say no to Dreyer. Uh, someone actually mentioned maybe training Kayusta as a right back, which uh, might be an idea, but I don't think he's going to be good enough. Durami, I'm going to steer away from at the moment because there are other options. Central midfield is definitely something we could still look to try and improve in with Billing or Berg or Falk, although... With Sonogar coming through, I guess Nogar and um, well, no, Jan Elt's quite young. Nogar's not the youngest, still mid twenties, I guess. Is a bit too early to be saying, "Oh, you're a bit old for me now. You're 26." Like mm. such is the nature of FIFA, it seems. Unfortunately, right. Uh, I'm not going to make a decision yet. Let's see if we can get a scout report back on Centellas, or at least a portion. Uh, of a scout report back. And Jesper Carlsen's scout report has now come in. 74 rated. I want Dan's car though. It is so expensive. Ah, decisions, decisions, decisions. I mean, I need, I need two really. So I could bring, I could bring, I could bring Carlsen in to replace Valencia. And then still bring Dan's car and potentially whistle if he signs for them in real life in as well let's do it let's sign yet oh how much money have i got left yes because i'm thinking midfielder as well oh i'm gonna wait i'm gonna wait until i've made a decision about left back because i don't think i've got enough to do both I, well i might do because wages let's see what we can do with the money then come on ah it's not gonna it's not gonna be much 23 Oh, I'm torn at the minute. I'm torn. We'll keep going. We'll keep going. We'll make a decision in a few days' time. We've still got about a week to go. A transfer offer for Sergi Canos, but it's Ricardo Rodriguez that they've offered me in place. And I don't want a 28-year-old, 76-rated Ricardo Rodriguez. Thank you very much. So Canos will stay for now. A loan offer for Dervis Sholu, though, from Borussia Mönchengladbach for two years. Ah, I'd rather just have a one-year loan, if that's okay. But certainly Dervis Sholu can go out and that would free up the opportunity to maybe bring in Carlson on the wing. And potentially Downsgaard. I might have to wait till next season for Mikkel Downsgaard, to be honest. I'm probably going to have to wait till next season to sign him. I just want those final scout reports, but I don't know whether I'll get one on Centeas before the end of the before the end of the window. We've got Southampton on transfer deadline day. Canos transfer for £8 million from Bayer Leverkusen. He's an important player for Brentford in real life. And he's a popular player for Brentford in real life. But Bayer Leverkusen is a step up. Um, oh shit. I'm going to set... Have they agreed that? Yeah, they've agreed that short-term short -term loan. Okay, till the end of the season. Sergi Canos, or Canos, I will negotiate... I'm going to try and be as open to transfers as I as I can be. Like, obviously in FIFA, it's easier to just bat deals away and players don't get pissed off at you. But I think I want to try and open myself up to being more realistic with transfers. In real life, players come and players go. And... 
I want, I think I, to make my content a little bit better, a little bit more realistic, I think I need to open myself up to just losing players. Like, sometimes in real life, when you're a fan of a club, you end up selling a player that you don't want to sell because the right club comes in for them. Really? I didn't think that was too much to ask for. I kind of balls that up there, haven't I? Well, I mean, with the potential that he's got, surely he's well, if you're gonna if you're gonna start at eight, surely ten is not too much to go for. Derbyshire has now gone out on loan. We'll see him this game against Southampton, and we'll have transfer deadline day. Unfortunately, the Danny Ings to oh we won Josh De Silva and Burmo, and Burmo with a brace. Fair enough. Uh, Unfortunately, the Danny Ings to Aston Villa transfer went through a couple of days before we started this save. So I wasn't able to do that when I was changing the uh, the rosters around. So the biggest deals so far in this window are Chiro Immobile from Lazio to Manchester City for 88.8 .8 million. Lisandro Martinez to Bayern for 79. And Mikel Marino to Barcelona for 74.3. I wonder if disabling the first transfer window might actually mix things up with the sort of transfers that you see in career mode because you do tend to see similar sort of movements in the first couple of windows when you have a summer transfer window but i wonder with these updated squads and teams kind of filling in the gaps in their squads in real life that we've then replicated in the game whether because the way that it's coded or the way that it used to be coded is that ai teams look at their squad they figure out where they're weak and they look to improve in their area but if that's already been done by teams in real life and we've replicated that in a save by updating the rosters, then they're going to strengthen in other areas. So we might see some some different transfers. How much money have I got? <sighs> I've got 23 million. Dervisoli's now gone out on loan. So I, I'm desperate. I, not desperate, but I do need a winger. I do need a winger. Carlson is eight and a half. Dam's got 15. I can't afford them both. But, oh, but I want... Oh, God! I just can't make decisions. There's too many options. Mikkel, come on. You can come in. He's, abso he's absolutely someone that I definitely want to bring in at some point in this save. So, let's do it now. Let's just get it done. 14 million. I know I'm under undervaluing. Oh, hello. I didn't know Claudio Ranieri was manager at Sampdoria. Uh, 15 uh, and a bit. Come on, Claudio, talk to me. 19.9 still. No, I want to spend all of my budget on him. I don't want to spend all of my budget on him. 16 and a half. Negotiate with me, Claudio. Dilly ding, dilly dong. Come down a bit, please. Fuck. 17? Say yes. Claudio Ranieri said yes. 17 million for Mikhail Damsgaard. Right. £13,000 a week is on. I will offer him crucial. He wants important. Ah, fine. I, I'm not going to be able to. It was sign two players that are crucial and make a profit of £36 million. And I, I could sign two players that are crucial, but I'm not going to make a profit of £36 million, So, uh, <laughs> no point giving him crucial and having him want more football than, I'm, than I can give to him at the moment. Woof. Remove that bonus. Thank you. Jesus. Thirty-four and a half thousand pounds a week signing bonus of three hundred and fifty grand. Thirty-nine grand a week. That's agreeable. That's fine. Certainly saves me more money. Mikkel Damsgaard is in. Let's freaking go. Uh, oh, and Burmo is now seventy-eight rated. I'm gonna take Canos out of the starting lineup, I think, and put him into Rotato. And Mikkel Damsgaard is going to go on the left-hand side. Minus 36. <laughs> Sorry, pal. He's going to go on the left-hand side of that starting lineup. Okay. Damsgaard is in. Joel Anderson is in. Do I have much money left to maybe sign someone else? What have I got? £5,083,000 available. Could I loan someone? I don't know whether anyone would be open to it. I'm definitely not going to be able to afford Sinteas. Could I loan Robert Sko? No, please. Oh, no, I'm not going to be able to loan anyone now, am I? Oh, decisions, decisions. Can I loan him? No, piss. 
What's he valued at? Six and a half. Oh, can I, can I twist their arm? Can I twist their arm? Is there anyone that I don't want? Oh, I can't. You guys wanted me to keep Marcus Force for a little while. Do you want Joel Valencia? I kind of still need Joel Valencia for the time being. Oh, I'm so torn. Do you want... Ah, Mass Bidstrup? Do you want Mass Bidstrup? Jan Jambaruk? That's not going to take enough off it, though. Oh, come on. There's got to be someone I can use. John VA? You want John? But then I'm going to be short on setbacks because I haven't got the money to... Oh, Jesus Christ. I've just not got enough players. I've not got enough players. Let's try Bistrup. Come on. And I'll offer a transfer fee of four. Four plus Bistrup. You want Nurgle? Not a chance. No. Go away. So, oh. I mean, I could call back Ola No. 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 2.6 plus John V8. No, I can't go 2.6 plus John V8. Uh, 5.6 plus John V8. Say yes. Shit. I don't think I can afford to do anything else in this window. Such is the nature of football sometimes. I don't think I'm going to be able to afford to do what I want to. So, I'm just not going to... I'm not going to force it. We will just wait. Looks like Patrick Berg might be on his way to Schalke. We'll just wait. We'll save the money. We'll spend it next season. I'll offer contracts around to my players that are obviously going to now want Premier League level wages. And then we'll be in a position, or a much better position, to negotiate next season. So, Mikel Downsgall comes in. A Christopher Ayer for with Sebastian Roder. No, I don't want... I don't want him. Interesting Berg. Yeah, we, we saw that a moment ago. That's going to be all of my transfer business done then, I think. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Six hours to go. A bid for Ethan Pinnock from Getafe. I could... I could... Release course is 7.9 mil. He did play well in that last game though, but seven, oh, he's 27. <clears throat> sure, because then I can maybe go and bring in Victor Nelson, and he's higher rated or at least higher potential. Will you give me 6.5? 4.6 still. Will you give me six? I'm willing to let him go for five and a half. A final offer. Okay, let me come down quite significantly then. How about 5.3? Okay, <laughs> he stays then for now. I'm not just going to let him go on the cheap. He's valued at four points. He's valued higher than they offered. I'm not just going to sell him under valuation. That's, that's just pointless. A loan offer for Elliot Weaver, which I shall reject. Obviously, he's, uh, he's doing all right, isn't he? So we'll keep him in for now. Oh, dearie me. This is a, a busy transfer window without much actually happening. Stone Lea is a bid for uh, Bistrup. I will actually... Well, I'll delegate that to just the loan. I think I'd rather let Mas Bistrup go out on loan and then recall Ola Sernagar. Uh, that's going to be a no. Horse loose stays. If Bistrup goes, then I'll call back, uh, I'll call back Ola. Three hours to go. Two hours to go. One hour to go. Is he going or not? Loan agreement. Stun on liais for two years. Done. A bid for Jean Vier. A swap. A swap deal with Me No. No way. Sick off me a 64 rated player. Get out. I don't actually know if there's going to be enough time for Bishop's loan to go through now. But if I, I don't know if I can cancel Thingy's loan deal outside of a window. I imagine I can. Can I cancel that loan deal outside? I'm going to recall him from loan. I'm going to recall him from loan. Now I'm going to play him ahead of Bidstrup. Right. Oh, I wanted to go through all of the different clubs. Well, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang gone from Arsenal. Apologies that I've obviously just balls that up and I can't show you the individual deals from each 
from each team in the Premier League. I just got carried away and advanced a bit too quickly. I can show you the top deals of the uh, window and the season so far. Samus from position change we've done. Bishop loan rejected in the end. The uh, time ran out and uh, Sornagar is back with us. So, uh, transfer history. Biggest deals in this save so far then. Biggest deals in this save so far. You saw the top three. Koke to Arsenal for 63 million. Aubameyang's gone to Inter for 60 mil. Tawa Guedes at Chelsea now. Uh, Daryl Moreno at Liverpool for 56.8 million. It is Angel Correa at Manchester City for 46.6 million. Jonathan Okone is now at Inter. David Neres is at Lille. Uh, Yuri Bashish is at PSG. Zubeldi is at Leicester. Romagnoli, Barcelona. Marco Reus has gone to Paris Saint-Germain. Coop Mainers has gone to Betis. Carlos Veja to Inter, 31. Surprising. Sergio Roberto we've played against today. Ike Muniain is now at Aston Villa. Soyuncu to Dortmund. Isco to Everton. Hello. Uh, Sergio Canales to Fiorentina. Domenico Berardi to Juventus. Stefan Savic to Chelsea. Bellotti to Leverkusen. Iago Aspas to Leicester. Oswal Donato to Villarreal. Beretta from Atletico Mineiro to Spurs. More transfer dealings from Brazil. You don't tend to see many transfer dealings from Brazil, although I guess the, the values of the top transfers don't tend to go down this low in this list normally there's normally a lot more uh this just gone to Villarreal, Sebastian Coates to Real Madrid anything else that piques our interest Eric Bailly to Lyon Eric Dyer to Atalanta and Dicker has gone to Sporting Drongoski to Wolves Joaquin from Valladolid to Real Madrid interesting Yanazai to Burnley Quadrado to PSG for 19 million if I can I paid 90... Oh, never mind. I was just going to say, I'd have signed Quadrado for 19 million, probably. Uh, and I mean, Harrit to Crystal Palace at 18.4 million is the smallest of the deals that we can see. I think I'm happy with that window. I'm not entirely satisfied with the window. But we didn't have masses of amounts of money available to us. I'm actually going to put Ola Sonoga on the bench. So that I can call on him more regularly. Sorry, Nogo, but I don't think I don't think I want you on the bench anymore. I want to focus on the kid that could potentially be an absolute belter. Right. That will do us for today then. <sighs> Rate that transfer window out of 10 for me in the comment section down below. And let me know if you're happy with the transfer signings are made or if there's anything you would have done differently we've still got some money some money there that i can throw into contracts and update everybody basically and we'll take some of it over to next season of course as well i'm intrigued to know what our budget looks like next year after a year in the premier league because we're definitely not going to get relocated now i don't think it's a case of trying to finish as hard as we can so we ensure as much prize money as possible I don't know. I'd give that a 6 out of 10. We've improved in the squad in the areas that we wanted to. Wing back and winger. Something does feel missing though. But I'm not sure what that something is. We'll see how the season pans out. Thank you very much for watching. Drop the video a like if you've enjoyed. Make sure you're subscribed. I'll see you tonight on the stream. For some more Breaking Point F1 story mode. But for now, that's all for me here on this YouTube channel. Until tomorrow, I'll see you then.